Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the 2013 release of Fireball Roberts 57 Ford race car. It's a 125 scale kit from Ravel, number 85-4024. It's a skill level 3 kit for the advanced builder, and the kit's 171 parts are molded in white, chrome, and clear plastic with four vinyl no-logo street tires and water slide decals. It includes two different designs to choose from, including gauges and extras, and it has nicely laid out directions. Now the tooling for this kit was new in 13, and all of these kits uh, share that uh, crisp new feature. The body is really clean, only uh, having minimal die marks, and cleanup is easy. Now, there are several fine detailing parts to make things realistic, including a split bench seat for racing, roll bars, and a rear seat pan that fills the rear cockpit. The chrome was bright and clean, and the glass was nice and clear. The decals are colorful, and when you're done, it's about seven and three quarter inches long, two and three quarter inches wide, and two and a quarter inches high. Now, Fireball started out uh, in baseball, and that's where he got his nickname as a speedster on the diamond. So, when he started racing, he started winning, and before his death in 64, he was voted the most popular driver. At that time, with 33 NASCAR races and 206 starts. He also won the Daytona race in 62 and has now been inducted into the Motor Sports Hall of Fame. Here are the contents for the kit and as you can see they're bagged separately and the decals are colorful and register is good for those. Now we'll be using Model Master liquid cement for most of the construction, super glue for fragile parts and white glue for the window type uh, glass. Now, Please remember to use the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products you see or hear mentioned in the review. Grab the parts that you see here to start construction and we'll begin by an assembling the entire interior and the tub to the floor pan. There's 14 parts in total and you can glue all of these together for a good bond and then paint the entire thing a semi-gloss black. Assembling before paint is easier and it looks cleaner. Now the parts included here will be the floor pan, side door panels, uh, the two-piece fuel cell, a spare tire section, roll bars, a rear bulkhead, and the firewall. Before installing the seat, I painted it with some of that uh, Boots Brown Krylon spray and I also uh, took the um, bolster uh, for the seat there and covered it with some electrical tape to make it look like a piece of plywood covered with foam and tape like the real ones were back then. And I used um, a nice spray uh, on the uh, front seat there to, to kind of give it uh, a leather look. And once it was dry, I glued the uh, bolster on with some uh, super glue to get a good bond to the seat. Now remember, you have to remove paint or tape or chrome when you're gluing joints together for a good bond. Like the floor pan, we're going to take all of these parts for the frame and the rear suspension and the front suspension pieces and assemble them into the unit and then paint them all semi-gloss black. Now all the parts fit perfectly in place and there are clearly marked gluing points and descriptions on the directions that make it easy. I just used some regular uh, clear cement for this. We'll grab these parts out of the kit to assemble the basic engine and go ahead and put those together. Um, of course, uh, they all fit pretty well uh, into their respective positions and uh, there is good uh, gluing positions to put them into. So go ahead and assemble those and I painted the entire thing uh, red. Now the remaining parts of the engine were pretty simple uh, and they built up with no problems. Some clean outs around some of the location holes and pins were needed for uh, a good tight fit. And then the parts were painted uh, with different bottle paints, uh, steel gold and gloss black. And flat black might have been more realistic, uh, but I thought that uh, it might be better to um, uh, add a little shine to this as it was a race engine 
and could have had some uh, flash and pizzazz to it. Anyway, everything went together with no issues here. We can start to work on the body and there's some options here for um, just blank uh, flat plates that go over the headlights, taillights, or there's stock options uh, like the ones you see here for the headlight bezels and taillights. Uh, but we'll be using the flat plates for the uh, race car version and there's not a lot of um, uh, difference uh, between the race version and the stock version uh, on these old stockers. In fact, uh, the seat, the roll bar, um, the headlight and tail light uh, blanks are about the extent of it. They basically just took a car and made it a race car back then. So go ahead and glue the uh, headlight and tail light plates into position and then give the uh, body a nice overall with some fine sandpaper. And once that is done, uh, rinse it off, let it air dry. And then, uh, as this is a two-tone, I painted the whole thing with a right primer. And after it had dried overnight, I used some painter's tape to uh, tape off the section that I wanted, uh, you know, the different colors. And so, with that done, uh, I had um, used a little 3M tape, too, uh, to mask off the part of the car that would stay white. And so, there was some also some pressure-sensitive tape that... Uh, used along the uh, edges and the ridges there um, like a pinstripe to get a good clean bend on the roof features and lines and then you're going to uh, get that prepped for the red spray. So I used a uh, Krylon gloss red to spray the uh, body and of course you can see the tape is still applied there and so I did that in uh, about 10 minutes between coats and then after a couple of hours, uh, I carefully removed the tape, uh, allowing everything to dry once again overnight. Oh, I forgot to mention uh, that I had included the hood, uh, of course, uh, with the same at the same time to spray it red on both on the both sides to give it a good uh, match to the body. Now, once uh, we had dried overnight, I applied a couple of coats of uh, the Krylon clear paint. And it's good to keep your paint styles and types uh, together so there's not a compatibility issue. And before attempting to put the clear over the white primer, yeah, I tested it to make sure there wouldn't be any problems there too. And you should always uh, test paint compatibility. Now in this case, um, they all worked out just fine. And, and because the body uh, was painted with some white tape and then taped and painted red. Uh, but all with the same manufacturer paint. At this juncture, I went ahead and added some foil to the uh, trim areas of the car. And this stuff is like uh, adhesive tape that's made out of aluminum foil. And you just uh, cut off a strip that matches the shape of your feature. And then you, uh, you stick it on there and then rub it down and into the crevices uh, with a toothpick or a, a pencil eraser. And then you trim off uh, any of the excess and there you have a piece of trim that looks just like the real thing. Now it's time to decal the body and uh, these worked out very nicely. Um, even the uh, white decals uh, allowed very little bleed through of the red underneath. Um, so go ahead and place them according to the uh, instructions and the decal placement map or you can use this photo here uh, for an idea of how those decals would be applied. Use plenty of warm water and slide them on using plenty of warm water uh, to the body. And then if you uh, encounter any difficulties, you might want to consider using some of the uh, aftermarket setting solutions to make sure that they uh, follow all the contours. Although these went on pretty well uh, just by themselves. Now we can install the uh, glass into the body shell. And I used, actually uh, for this, because the... Uh, the windshield and the backlight were nicely beveled. I used uh, sparingly a little bit of uh, tube glue here and I let it get tacky uh, and then uh, just in a few places and then I uh, put the windows into position over some white glue to fix the rest of it into place and uh, it worked out very nicely. You just have to be careful to not get glue on the glass. Now we can work on the dash panel and the steering and um, you, what you see here is the back side of the dashboard uh, which shows where the decal for the gauges are located. Uh, 
um, you have to line that up. You just cut it out. It's not you don't use it as a decal, and then glue it into position uh, just as it is, so that the uh, black faces uh, protrude through the corresponding holes in the instrument panel. So once that's done, um, you know as you can see, the parts were finished with a little black and uh, chrome, and then uh, they were all glued into place. Now finally. Um, you'll find there's not a lot of extra details uh, added to the dash since it's a race car. I mean, uh, they weren't listening to the radio on the roundy rounds, so it fits perfectly into the interior. So go ahead and place that into position. Now we can mate the uh, interior uh, floor pan to the, uh, the chassis frame and the engine and they wiggle it into position and it fits perfectly there. Just make sure that you locate some gluing points and scrape off any paint before you uh, glue the two parts together. Um, you may want to test fit that, make sure everything lines up properly. And then uh, go ahead and uh, get those uh, placed uh, together. Next we'll work with the exhaust. Um, they were painted steel color and uh, they were actually cut off just past the mufflers like the uh, original racers were to uh, uh, reduce the amount of pushback on the engine for more horsepower and uh, once those had dried you kind of fish those through the frame rails and then attach them to the exhaust manifolds and into place. Now you can get the parts out for the wheel assemblies. I painted the uh, exterior portion of the wheel backs flat black and then the uh, wheel face uh, red just like the body and then we're going to go ahead and assemble those they're pretty basic there's four parts for each tire with the wheel back and front and the hub pin and the and the tire uh, the, there is a difference though between the front and the rear wheels the fronts have a center grease cap that's molded in molded in there and then um, go ahead and assemble those and snap them onto the uh, uh, spindles for uh, location Finally, we'll add the chrome body parts, the small pieces uh, on last, the bumpers, the grill, the door handles, and the hood lift handle and emblem. And that completes construction. Just be very careful when you're placing these in. Remember, you still have to remove some of that chrome in order to get a good glue joint. And then that's uh, the final pieces that will go into construction. Well, there you have it. As you can see here, the nicely detailed engine is uh, uh, seen through the uh, forward opening hood. And uh, overall, this was a nice kit. Everything fits together very well. Uh, the parts, the fit, and the detailing were very impressive. Uh, I still wish that we could get branded tires for our Ravel kits, but uh, uh, there are aftermarket parts and um, uh, decals that you can use to remedy that situation. So nonetheless, um, this is a very nice fitting kit, and if you like the early NASCAR uh, builds, this is one of the better ones. So if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. We hope you like this step-by-step -step scale model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can find us on Facebook and our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.